Hello Jeepers, how are we all doing? Welcome back to the Woolies MB Rebuild Project. So guys, fortunately the Jeep is in better condition as this, uh, than this one you can see here. Um, make of this what you will. Um, but we've been moving on with the project, which is excellent news, okay? It's uh, slow progress, um, just steady progress really. Lots of buying been going on, guys. But first things, uh, let's just have a shout out then to some of you guys who have been watching these um, videos and helping me out then. The first one is uh, to John Charlton, who managed to sort me out with a prop shaft yoke on the end here. This is the rear yoke and it's really nice and tight this one this is going to be great no clacking around or any sort of play in that so that really helped me out with that uh, worn out one so thanks a lot for that and also graham goodall watched uh, one of my videos and uh, he said come on over and he showed me his jeep and all his bits he's got he collects a lot of uh, nice uh, spare parts so he let me just go around and choose some spare parts so i've got loads of extra bits for the jeep which is really good so we got most of a jeep now so we're really moving on with that guys which is excellent news I did buy some other bits online as well, and uh, DHL managed to amazingly lose a brake drum, which uh, I needed. You guys know I had that scored brake drum, which the um, bearing race was turning in as well. And um, I used DHL as a courier to get that sent to me, and they managed to deliver that to a recycling center. So of all the places to deliver old rusty car parts, they managed to send them to a recycling center. So. Um, I'm hoping they're going to turn up. It seems unlikely. DHL's customer service is atrocious. They don't respond. They're quite surly, um, pretty useless. So I'm really upset with DHL. Uh, I used to use UPS and I'm going back to using UPS because they actually provide proper service. But uh, yeah, not pleased with that, guys, because I got that brake drum and some other components quite cheaply. They looked good and they would have really helped me out. And now, uh, yeah, they're at a recycling center. So not ideal, guys, but we're moving on from that. We can step away from that and calm down. But <laughs> uh, what else are we doing there, guys? Lots of purchasing. Uh, I have finished off the front axle and the repairs to it. So one of the brake line clips on it was busted off or in the wrong place. Uh, Bubba had welded it in the wrong place for some reason. So I just re uh, recreated one and stuck that round. And then also, guys, um, we took out the uh, steering pin, which the bell crank goes on, which went uh, came out really nicely, actually. Um, I was quite worried about it because it can be a bit of a pain. Um, but uh, what I did is I used a TIG welder to help me here with heat. So the key to these getting these um, pins out, you know, you've got the main shaft, you've got the main pin, and then down the side of it, a locking key goes in there. Okay, guys, you've got to get the locking key out first, and then you've got to drive this uh, pin out. And it's not easy when they've been in there for years. Um, this, you know, it doesn't look particularly rusted, but there's a lot of surface area and there's a lot of uh, grabbing going on there, which won't let it out. So what I did, guys, is I got the TIG welder and on the end of the and on the end of the key, I just put the heat on it. So with TIG, you feed the filler rod and the metal into it. So if you don't use any filler rod, you can just get the jet on there, which heats it up and you use it to heat things, uh, which is probably an inefficient way of doing it. But anyway, it worked fine. So I just got the um, TIG on the end of it, just heated up that pin till it was nice and hot left it to cool down, down, and then just drove it out with a punch and it came out really nicely. So that worked really well. Same with the pin as well, the main pin. On the end of it there, guys, just got the TIG heat in it, let it heat it up, left it for a while, and then start sledgehammering on it. And out it comes, and you can see, if we can zoom in here, guys, you can see probably the wear on it a bit. Um, you can compare the sort of the diameters there, guys, and uh, you can see why you have to replace these, because it's really worn out, so this is why it needs replacing. So this will be replaced with a nice new component then, which would be great, so uh, really pleased with that, because I was quite concerned whether it would come out or not, and it came out really nicely, so that's a proper thumbs up with that, guys, so we're pleased with that. Other bits then, guys, the block is apparently done. Uh, I just got a photo of it today, which we can just have a quick look at here. Um, apparently it's completed, uh, it's all ready to come back to me, so I'm gonna be interested to see what it looks like when it comes back. Obviously, we're just back at square one with this, uh, with this block because all we've done is repair a crack in it so um, it's it's like a block that you would just get normally without a crack obviously none of the machining work has been done to it yet so could still throw up nasties but um, hopefully it's going to be good so pleased with that so that's coming back we'll look at that when that uh, finally arrives then the other thing guys was all those parts which have been sent out to the blasters have come back which is really good news um, so let's have a look at those uh, blasted parts then Guys, we've got the bits back from the blasters, which is excellent. So let's have a look at some of this lovely stuff. It's really worked out nicely. The guys who do the blasting um, do a good job. And they also, I don't know if this is like a phosphor coating or something like that, but they also coat it so it won't rust again, because otherwise it, it would just flash over immediately. Um, but uh, everything's come, come out really nicely, actually. Springs are all, you know, good. These are the um, 
the ones which were more worn, or should I say more rusted, but they're still, you know, good strong ones. These ones are really nice, actually. Um, but we can see, oh, look, the sun's coming out. We can see all sorts of stuff. The fan is lovely. Um, there are a couple of pinprick sort of holes, uh, rust holes in the front of the sump there, which I'm going to have to um, weld up. So that's uh, been brought out by the um, blasting, which is good. But you've got things like these guards, you know, They've come out um, really beautifully and everything like that. I mean, it does remove the original finish, which is a shame. When I took these off, underneath here was lovely shiny spot welded metal and everything like that, and you get the original finish. As soon as you blast it, you lose that finish, unfortunately. It etches it uh, and it's lost forever, but you know, it does clean it out perfectly. Um, and it also makes it really good for paint to adhere to it. Um, but these bits over here, guys, uh, what else we got? The manifold hiding away down there. That's the CJ manifold which I'll turn into an MB one by grinding off the bits which shouldn't be on there. And I think just putting this tap in, you know, putting it all the way in, putting some Loctite on it and then just grinding off this area here is my intention. Um, but we've got our lovely covers, diff covers, they're all perfect. The springs come out really nicely, torque reaction spring. EC marked bolts there. This is more Willy's rough, rough and ready stuff on the back here look at that they they just stick that bit on weld it and then uh, drill it through there when it came to it in manufacturer and then the other parts hiding in here guys they all turned out really nicely as well i don't know what's going on here guys but i got a load of ford parts which is kind of annoying when you're not looking for ford when you're looking for ford parts you can't bloom and find them and when you're not looking for ford parts they turn up everywhere these are ford uh spring clips and uh these yeah, these guys <laughs> Where is he? He's nicely Ford marked as well. So, um, where is he? Get him in the sun. There he is. Can you look at, see that? Yeah, I mean, everything's nicely Ford marked, which is really annoying because um, I don't want Ford stuff now, but I can save it all and use it later on a later GPW, a GPW project, which will be good. And even this, um, look at this. This is lovely. This is really nice, but it's very clearly Ford marked. So, hmm, probably hold on to those bits for the future. But, um, just a quick interesting thing guys here, comparison between um, these old uh, original spring clips and, a, and a, a NOS one, okay? So you can see, interestingly, this, this is the NOS one here, the Ford one, you can see how they painted it. Can you see in the centre there, they obviously had it on a line or a, a rod and sprayed around it so you can see how the paint has gone around there um, before it was dry and then they've just lied it down, they've removed it and they've, where's it, yeah, they've just laid it down somewhere here and up here so you just for finish when it comes to parts finish just imagine guys but obviously it was world war ii when they were building this stuff and they just wanted to get stuff made so they um uh, sprayed it and then stuck it down while it was still wet and it's got all these marks on it so when you're spraying it just remember that you know we always we're going to go for a perfect finish and everything but this is definitely not perfect which is why it was important the spraying once everything was on the jeep so if the parts were coming to them you know, just with a bit of anti-corrosion on them, a bit of spraying, okay? They then assembled them on the Jeep, on the axle, and then they gave it a really good going over to make sure that everything was fully sprayed, okay? To make sure that corrosion protection was in there. So that's an interesting thing to remember, guys, that they did get sprayed um, when they were made, but then they really got sprayed once it was on the Jeep. Um, and you can see the Ford mark on the top here. It's very lightly stamped. And this, this part, which has been on the Jeep for 70 years, that's how it ends up. There you go, you can see him at the top there. So quite interesting. But all this stuff, guys, is lovely. It's come out really nicely. No real hidden horrors or anything like that. So really, I've got no excuse except to start priming this stuff. Somehow, now it's winter and cold. I'm not entirely sure. You know, this might really hold things up. Uh, and get it all assembled, get these springs back together and start putting them on the blooming Jeep. Because I haven't got too many excuses anymore to get this into a rolling chassis or a rolling frame. So let's get on with it. Another completed bit, guys, is the springs. So here they all are, ready to go. Well, mostly ready to go. I'm really pleased with how these turn out. But um, once you've got them all blasted and separated, like this, into individual leaves um, and sprayed up, they need to be assembled. So let's look at assembling of the front springs then, guys. I promise this isn't some kind of weird hostage video or something like that, guys. Um, but uh, yeah, today, guys, I'm dressed up in World War II gear. It's cold, it's dark, I've got a hat on so you can't see my bald head. Um, so it means we're moving on to assembling stuff, which is all good news. And we're moving on to assembling these springs, which is the first thing we need to do to get this rolling chassis sorted out. And they've turned out really well. I'm really pleased with it. You know, I've been spraying in the cold. I've sprayed inside um, when the temperature is about 10 degrees. So I had to heat the springs up using blooming 
um, hair dryers and things like that to get the enamel to set. So it's been a, a hard process to do this. But we've got there and these are worked out really nicely. This is the poorest set of springs, um, the more rusty ones, but they're going to be good springs. I'm quite pleased with them. Um, so they're all, you know, they're all nice and set and everything like that. So that's awesome. The uh, bushings were cut out and pressed in. There's no point in doing them if you're not going to replace a couple of dollar um, bearing um, bushings in them. So that's all be done. So they're fantastic. And then for the centers, guys, used uh, 5 16 Allen head bolts. Didn't use the proper bolts because they'd have to order them in from America and everything like that. It's quite difficult. So these are perfect Allen bolts. So you can hold the head and just uh, do the nut up there. To get them together, you just clamp them together with a C clamp. And as you can see, I've been doing a fair amount of clamping recently because my cheap crappy C clamp has uh, given up the ghost completely. So he's going to get replaced. So that's no use. So we've just been using the, um, the grips then to hold things apart, uh, together, guys. But it's, um, it's gone together really well. I've already done one set. And um, I found that the importance of having these good rebound clips is, is really important because you couldn't use the old ones because they would just fatigue off because these need a lot of force through them to get them to sit properly and set and everything like that. So, you know, using uh, original ones isn't going to work. You need to use these uh, high quality reproduction ones. And remember the link was in the uh, previous video uh, for the guys who makes these. I'll link back to that um, in the comments below so you can see these if you missed that. Um, but yeah, you get the um, clamps together, guys. And they labelled inside for how many springs they go on. These are threes, these are sixes, these ones here. And on my orientation, on my springs, for the eye at the front, um, this is how they would go on here. You can see we've got the hole on this side and the tab on this side. You just get your clamp to hold them together like that, clamp them together, and then you just start beating down this side with a soft mallet, just whacking down, pull the, bend the tab up, and then whack over this side, put them together, smash it all together. They come together really nicely. You just work your way through them and it holds them all together nice and solid. It's uh, quite straightforward really putting springs together. It's not that difficult. There's quite a lot to it really, you know. It does take time and you've got to work out the knack of getting these clips on. It's, it's um, time consuming. I can't imagine they would have done it manually in World War II getting these rebound clips on. I imagine they just had a big clamping machine, they just a fixture, they put it into it, clamped them and everything like that, and they just whacked over the tabs. Because manually doing it takes quite a long time. I mean, it's not difficult, just time consuming. Um, so we're going to work our way through these springs then, guys, get these together, and then get them mounted up on the Jeep. I've already done one set, which is the set which the torque uh, re reaction spring will go on. Got to do all the other ones then. So uh, let's get a move on with that, guys. And by the power of television here, guys. I've done the other ones. This is the other set done, completed, and this is how they end up looking. Um, I haven't uh, primed these clips yet. I, I was going to prime them, but I thought if I was hitting them and beating them, the paint would just get smashed off them anyway. So they'll get a coat of OD when they uh, all get assembled onto the frame and then the frame all gets sprayed. But here they are, one set of brand new rebound clips fitted. And like I said, I'll just uh, trim this down here. But um, they look really smart. They've come together. You know, they look just like the originals did from the factory. It's, they're identical. They fit perfectly. You know, if you've got poor ones of these where the sizing was out, this would be a blooming nightmare getting these to fit properly. But these went on so nicely. Look at them all. They align beautifully. So fantastic rebound clips there. One complete set of springs. Back to a factory original condition. I mean, like we said at the start, I could have got them re-arched as well. Um, but I think, like I said, for the weight, just me driving around in the Jeep, it's probably best to just um, keep them with a bit of sag in them, a bit of a softer ride, especially as I've had years and years of, well, not years and years, years of driving around the hard reproduction set on the GPW. Having a softer set with a bit of give in them will be really nice. And these, these have got a bit more give in them. The GPW set were quite fused when I first got them and I had to break them to get a bit of movement in them. But these have got a bit of movement, so I'm quite pleased with these. So that is springs pretty much done, guys. Well, one of them is complete yet. Yeah, I've got to get the uh, rest done yet. But um, yeah, really pleased with those. Turned out really nicely and not that difficult to do, really. Yeah, so I was really pleased with the springs, guys. They turned out really nicely then. So the next course of action is going to be finishing off some minor welding bits on the frame. There are some threaded bits which need redoing. So we'll get that done. Spin the frame over and then start mounting up all these springs so that we can get the axles on. So really making progress here, which is excellent news. Talking of axles then guys, I've been playing with differentials and having a look at them and working out what I'm going to do. Um, it's an interesting thing, I'm not sure what we're going to manage here, but part of it was uh, I got hold of new differential ring gears and pinions for it guys. It's 1970s Spicer stuff, so um, we've got options here about what we're going to do and how we're going to set these up. So 
could be quite interesting looking into this. Um, see if I can manage it on my own. Maybe not. We'll see. Um, it's uh, quite a quite a process and job to set up uh, differentials properly. So we'll see. But I'm hopeful that we can uh, sort it out together. Um, but uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the moment. Uh, just a couple of bits been working on there. It seems to be slow progress, but there's a lot to do, you know, all these little bits and bobs and sorting out the springs and what have you, and loads of purchasing going on. So uh, we're moving along with the uh, Willys MB project, so I'm pleased with that. Um, but I hope you enjoyed that, guys. If you're not subscribed, like and subscribe for more content, and we can move on with this uh, MB project and get it sorted. So thanks a lot, and see you next time.